that uh, the tzaddik. And ninety. Oh, he take this. Ninety A. We start at a Mishnah. Mishnah says, "Kol midisha b'mikta shayim nidasha." Now, um, we, we've learned things before that may seem to contradict what we're learning now, but be patient with it because what's actually happening is we're bringing the source of the things that we learned before, and we have to go through the machlekesin of how it works. Here it says. that all measurements of the Beis HaMikdash were not full, were not considered the measurement unless they were heaping over. Chutz Mishal Kain Gadol, except for the Kain Gadol's measurement, that its heap was inside. Its heap inside means that it was considered full when it was flush with the top. That, that was, let's say uh, the measurement was an Isarin. So when was it Isarin? When it was full to the top? when it was heaping over. So all the, all the measurements in the Beis HaMikdash were considered the, the actual measurement when they were heaping. Except the measurement of the Kayin Gadol that was considered that measurement that you started when it was flat. Is that the word that you use? Flush? Is it? Yeah, but unless it means that the cup had a quarter and a half three fours, his portion was a quarter and it was heaping inside. That's what I understood when you read it to me. It. I know. That's it's it's really interesting that it's, that it's a, what it means is, is that it contains the full measurement. In, I don't know why it's written like that, but that's, that's how it's written. Okay, Mida Salach. What about liquid measures? Liquid, me, liquid measures you can't really heap, uh, but they can spill over, and you could have a little uh, surface tension when it holds it over. But it says, Beret Seim Kaidish. What falls down the side is sanctified. And midasayavish spirit same chal. However, dry measurements, what falls over the side is not sanctified. Rabbi Akiva Imer, Rabbi Akiva says, midasalach, when it comes to liquid measurements, that's kaidish. Why? Lathikach spirit same kaidish. What's the reason why what spills over the side? is sanctified, it's because the whole Midas Salach is sanctified. However, Midas Yavish Chal, the, the, um, the dry measuring cups were never sanctified. When sanctified means that they weren't uh, anointed with the Shemana Mishcha. So therefore, Lefikach Beret Chal. So therefore, what spills over the side is also not sanctified. The Gemara is going to explain what about what's inside. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that because it sounds like he's saying that there's nothing that's sanctified in the Midas Achal. We'll see. Rabbi Yaisi Yaimer, Lemishimzeh. That's not the reason. Ela Shalach Nekar, Vayavashen Nekar. Let's see what the Aleph is from the Bach. And take it out. Take out the word Nekar. What do you put in? Nekar. They say, they use the word Nekar, which they say means that it gets mixed up. Basically, what happens is. Uh, let's see, this is liquid. I'm pouring into this. So when I pour it in, so as it's filling up, the, um, the, what I'm pouring in sinks to the bottom. And, and what fall, flows out is what already rose to the top from before. Right? Like these, like the, cu- like the currents. So, so um, what's falling out of, the, of this holy vessel is something that was already contained in the vessel. When I have a dry uh, measurement, what I'm putting in, what's falling out is what's only always on the top. It doesn't sink to the bottom. So that's Rabbi Yossi's opinion. He says, why? It, that everyone's accepting that what spills over on a dry measure is not sanctified. Rabbi Akiva has his reason. He says, well, the, the vessel isn't sanctified. Rabbi Yossi says, no. It has to do with that it wasn't in the vessel because it was always on the top. It never made it to the bottom. It never made it inside the vessel. Nobody <coughs> argues that what's in the vessel falls out. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see, Rabbi Akiva. <laughs> but what's not in the vessel, what's, what never made it in the vessel is clearly. Mm-hmm. No one argues about that. Um, 
Okay, let's see. The first thing that we said was kol midashem mikdash hayin nigdashes that they were heaping over the top. That's what we said. All the all the measurements, they had to be heaping. <coughs> when my wife was in high school, so they made a cookbook. So her grandmother had these delicious cookies. So she called the grandmother for the recipe. <laughs> But the recipe was like a handful of this and a pinch of that. She didn't know how to put it in the thing. <laughs> so it's, I, don't, I don't know how you can do real measurements when you say heaping. Because like how heaping is heaping? I, you know, you could get it a little more and... <laughs> Mani. Uh, Ereb Meir, who's the, author, who's the author of our Mishnah? That we said that all the measurements in the, in the base of Migdash were heaping. If it's Reb Meir... Now, you, you have to remember... Reb Meir earlier told us that we had three measurements of Lach. We had an Isaran, we had another Isaran, and we had a Chatzi Isaran. He said, why do we have two Isarans? It's the same thing. He says, no, one of them was heaping, and one wasn't heaping. He- heaping means that in order to get it to an Isaran, you had to fill it up more. The other one was larger, it was an Isaran inside. And then we had the half, half Yisar, and the Gemara discussed the half Yisar, and is it heaping, is it not heaping? Uh, and I think we determined that it wasn't heaping. If it's Reb Meir, so Chad got the Shabbat. Why is it saying Kol Midash, every measuring cup? We had three, and only one of them was heaping. I Rabbanon, if it's the Rabbanon, Chadad, we only had one Yisar, and it, was only, and it wasn't heaping. So it really leaves us with this. This Mishnah doesn't go with any opinion. It, it, it's, it attempts to be Reb Meir first. Why? Because Reb Meir is the, the way Reb Yudha Anasi organized Mishnayas is there were many sages that had um, sayings and, and teachings, Mishnayas. But Reb Yudha Anasi liked Reb Meir's text. He thought his language was the best. And so. And so he, cho- he chose Reb Meir's text um, to be the base for all Mishnayas, and then afterwards he added in other opinions. Sort of like what the, what the Shulchan Aruch did, when, or the Rebbe of Cairo. He chose the language of the Rambam, and then he added in opinions. That, that, but when you look at the, at the Shulchan Aruch, the, the, just the plain language should, should be the language of the Rambam, and then he adds in where he disagrees. Um, so Rabbi Danasi chose Reb Meir. So Reb Meir's opinion would get in there much more. That's why it says, Stam Mishnah is Reb Meir. If it doesn't have an opinion, it would be Reb Meir's opinion. So, but here we don't have, it's not Reb Meir, it's not the Rabbanan. So Amar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, Laylam Reb Meir. Really it is Reb Meir's opinion. <coughs> so Umay Kalmides. So what does it mean all measurings of the Beit HaMikdash were heaping? Reb Meir said there was only one that was heaping. It says, Kalmedides. Doesn't mean all, see all measurings. All measurings that was done with this one cup were done heaping. There, there was one measuring cup that was heaping. All the measurings that were done with that cup were heaping, but the other measuring cups were not heaping. <laughs> okay, that's a way out. <laughs> okay, midas salach saying kaidish. This is an interesting piece. The liquid measures, what spills over is sanctified. The Maika Mifligi, what is the Machlekes here? We had the Tanakama, we had Rabbi Akiva, we had Rabbi Yossi. What are, what are they arguing? They all seem to say the same thing in the end. What are, the, what is their, what are they arguing about? Tanakama Savar, the first opinion holds, Mida Salach Nimshacha Bein Mimifnem Bein Mimachutz. That the liquid measures were anointed, the, the, they took the uh, holy oil, the anointing oil, to sanctify the vessels. They anointed it on the inside of the vessel and on the outside. That means that if something spills over the outside, it's going to be sanctified. Midas yavesh, but the dry measures, nimshcham mi were only anointed on the inside. They were not anointed on the outside. That means only things that were on the inside of the, of the dry measures were sanctified, but was what spilled over the outside is not sanctified. That's simple, Tanakama. Rabbi Akiva Savar Mida Salach Nimshcha Beim Mi Bifnim Beim Machutz. He agrees to the first part. Liquid measures were anointed on the inside and the outside. What spills over is sanctified. Mida Siyavish, Lein Nimshcha Kalikar. Mida Siyavish were not sanctified at all. So, so the, this is a, a 
Shemem Mishpas Kodesh. Yeah. Yeah, the anointing oil. They did it one time. After the, yeah, the how did they, where did they get it afterwards? They, I don't know, how did they anoint all the vessels after the Mishkan? Yeah, so assuming it was a vessel yeah. for the Mishkan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but it was done once. Yeah, uh, originally. Uh, Before you explain that, the liquid measurements went to the bottom and the overflow was already in there, so that's why it was... Right? Yeah, that's going to be Rebiesi's opinion. Okay, yeah. got it. So there's different reasons, different people hold different reasons why... Why, okay. yeah, why the same thing is going <coughs> to... Um, the only problem here with Rabbi Akiva is if the dry measures were never sanctified. So, so, how, really so how does everything become holy? You, uh, most things, you have to put them in the vessel, they become holy from being put in the vessel. So Rabbi Akiva holds that there's something called Kedusha's path. The person said, this is sanctified, but it doesn't have the Kedusha's keli. All the dry things don't have the Kedusha's Kili until the sacrifice was slaughtered or all those other things. So it's, it's a, a different sheet. Rabbi Yaisi Sava, Rabbi Yaisi holds, Both the, dry, both the dry and the liquid were anointed on the inside. And this is the reason here. The lach, nekar, the liquid is uprooted. When we gather the monocosi and it comes from inside the vessel. However, the, the dry <coughs> does not get uprooted. Uh, okay, that's, 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 the, the dry doesn't get uprooted. It falls off from the top. It never made it down. You follow? When you pour a liquid into another liquid, it mixes right away. Uh, uh, I forget where Rabbeinu Yainim, uh, uh, the Ran, it's not Rabbeinu Yainim, the Ran in Pesachim discusses, uh, usually we say, <laughs> is that from a certain person? <laughs> the, uh, Ooh, I saw him. Uh, usually, usually we say, Tata Gavar. You know, when you have um, uh, a hot and cold thing, we say the lower one, the heat rises, basically. That the lower one would... Up. So the... Uh, <coughs> the, um, <coughs> the, the, the Ran in Sachin says that you don't say Tata Gavar by a liquid. It's a problem. It's usually... Why? Because the liquid makes it to the bottom. Which one becomes it? Do you follow? It's, it's this Svara, that the liquid goes to the bottom. It, you can't say what's on the bottom. Didn't we have this powerful conversation that we're... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's, that's that. what we're saying. That that the it's not the liquid oil, no matter what. This cicada needs to cut it. You know, we went to earlier, a month ago, two months ago. I was trying to talk. Yeah, that the keli makes it kaidah. So the keli needs to be anointed. And so the only problem that you, you're going to have, you, the, your question is Rabbi Akiva's opinion. Rabbi Akiva says that the keli wasn't anointed. The dry vessels weren't anointed. I think that was actually the discussion, how do things become sanctified. Okay, now the Gemara asks an interesting question. We spoke about lach. We spoke about things that go in and go out. He says, What's, what's the difference if it went in and it went out? The person that's putting it in, he's intending only what's necessary for the sacrifice to be sanctified. We're saying, oh, it's all getting sanctified automatically. But that wasn't his intention. So why is it becoming sanctified without his intention? This is said in the name of Rav. That this tells us that it doesn't need his intention. It went in the holy vessel. It becomes sanctified automatically without his intention. Ravina, my Ravina says, Loyla me malach, really, I can say, I can say to you that klishar se mekach nelamidas, that we actually do need the, uh, the intention come. And gazeira shem yemre metzi meklishar is lechal. But there's a decree that even though it's not really sanctified, follow, it went in and it went out and it's not sanctified. Why? Because he never had intention for it. The only problem is, is that there's a rabbinic decree that if people see that things that are coming out of um, a vessel, uh, a holy vessel, are being used for mundane things, so they're going to say, oh, you can 
just to change from holy things to mundane <laughs> things. You take it out of a holy vessel and just use it back in your house. Was there such a thing as a Kaylee in the base of Megiddo besides this one that wasn't much of a It was anointed. It's a very... Uh, we had discussions in this about... The, I don't know clearly, but we did have discussions about like things that touched on this. Were the knives... We remember we had a discussion about were the knives anointed. We had two extreme opinions. Oh, well, okay, we oh an actual uh, receptacle. Um, according to Rabbi Akiva, the Yavish. <coughs> we come out as people are bringing from Klisharis to Chal. So Ravina introduces to us the Gzeira. Maisiv Reb I don't know how this works. Ravina must be much earlier because Reb Zeira. Ravina can't be the end of the uh, Talmud. It must be an earlier Ravina. Because Reb Zeira was in the days of Rabba, was like third generation. Uh, second, third generation. So it can't be that uh, he's asking to Ravina as much. So it must be an earlier Ravina. Which, which I think it's clear that there was an earlier Ravina. Reb Zeira asks on Ravina. Ravina introduced Gezeris. He says, well, are oh, you talking about Gezeris making decrees? What about this one? Let's say the bread, the show bread, the lechem upon him was not put on in the right time. It's supposed to go on the table on Shabbos. They missed it. <coughs> Running late, I don't know. Uh, they put it on, it was already after Shabbos. So, so it's supposed to stay on the table for one week. Problem is, this wasn't really a full week. It is seven days, but it's supposed to be on for two Shabbosim. Right? So... Psula, that's invalid. So Kate said, yeah, so what should be done? He missed Shabbos. So you leave it for an extra Shabbos, so it's an extra six days on the table, you follow? See, we're talking about the Yeshikah, uh, I didn't say clearly. We're talking about the, um, the, the Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> So that's supposed to be burnt um, as the permitter for the showbread to be eaten. You see, the, the lechem upon him was eaten by the kayanim, but there was a section, just, just these two spoons were put on the altar, there were two spoons of frankincense were put on the altar, and then the showbread could be eaten. So what happened here, the, everything was put on too late, it was put on after Shabbos, you had to wait another six days till the following Shabbos, there would be two Shabbosim on the table. It's not a problem. So the Gemara introduced before Ravina that says we're worried about people making mistakes. We should make a gzera. Says Vamai, Hasam Nami, Lema Gzera Shem Yer Mafkid Miklisharis. How can you leave it on for so long? People are going to think that if you put something in a holy vessel, it doesn't become lina. Lina means left overnight till it becomes uh, a puzzle. People are going to think you. Oh, if you keep it in a holy vessel. It's going to be, you can la- it, it can last for longer, like a refrigerator type of thing, spiritually. Because usually it, uh, after the, by the morning, it's not, it becomes invalid. Mm-hmm. It, how do we go from discussing <laughs> cups and measurements to the yeah. What are we doing? What here? happened was, uh, Ravina introduced that there is a gzera mm-hmm. that people will say that you can take from a klisharis and into, put it into a klichal, even though it was never sanctified. Fine. But there's a gzera, people might say that. So he said, oh, you're worried about what people are going to say, that we're going to make gzeras like that? Here we have an instance where we're doing something that's really unacceptable in other situations, and we're not worried that people are going to say that you're allowed to leave it in a vessel overnight. So but we didn't finalize why the measuring cups are good or bad. We just ha- we left it. There's an argument, two opinions as to what the reason is. There's, t- there's two ways of, re- of answering why does... Why does liquid measure, according to Rabbi Yaisi, let's say, that goes into the vessel and comes out, according to everyone, uh, why does the liquid measure become sanctified if the person never intended that to be sanctified? One, one reason was Rav that says, well, it doesn't matter his intention. The second reason was, no, it does matter his intention, but it's just a gzera. So the Gemara explains that pnei you're asking what takes place in the sanctuary, what takes place outside the sanctuary. Pnei <laughs> No one knows what's going on in the sanctuary. No one's seeing that it was left here for an extra. But chutz kuli al miyadi. But what's outside, everyone knows. They see he's taking it. He, he's putting it back into his own vessel. That's a problem. The gazeras were only the outside. Oh, 
So that that the Gemara's question was going according to the way I understood it was going according to everyone, because everyone holds that the liquid measures become sanctified. The, the question is why, but everyone holds the liquid measures become sanctified. There must be that it was that the either either the outside was sanctified and when it spills over it gets sanctified because it was sanctified on the outside or it's because it was already inside and it was sanctified and it's when you pour a liquid whatever it is becomes sanctified the question is is a midas or midas okay Tanan Hassam we're not really done with this we just move on and we're still discussing it Tanan Hassam was taught somewhere else where's the Hassam in Shkalim Moiser Nesachim Leketsam is Beach. What's left over from the Nesachim goes to Ketsam is Beach. Ketsam is Beach means that sometimes the altar would be, would not have a lot of activity. And it doesn't look good for the, uh, just everything is sitting there idle. And, and so they would bring sacrifices just to keep it uh, active. It's called Ketsam is Beach. On the, on the slow days, they would, they would have other sacrifices that were like left over from things that they would bring them. So here we said, Meisr Nesachim is Ketzim is Beach. My Meisr Nesachim, what does it mean, Meisr Nesachim? Left over from the libations. So Rav Chia Bar, Bar Yosef Amar, be rooting me this. Rav Chia Bar Yosef says that it's the, what spills over from the vessels. We said it was sanctified, but it wasn't needed, right? So what do you do with it? So they say they would take this, and they would set, they would collect it together, all the birutsi midas, all the over, overflow, and they would sell it, and they would buy sacrifices, and that was brought for the uh, for the kaitsa uh, mizbeach. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Rabbi Yechanan says no. Kaisa sheshaninu. Meisen esachim is goes according to something else. It says hamakabel alav lasapik salases me arba vam de b'shalish. Let's see someone accept it on himself. To to, um, to supply the temple with four saw saw is a measurement of flour for a cella. A cella is easy. Let's say a cella is like a dollar. It has four dinar in it, so it's like it has quarters. So um, he's going to uh, supply four saw for a seller. The problem is that the price went up. And he can't you can't really get four saw for a seller. The, the the going rate became three saw for a seller. So it doesn't matter. Because he accepted on himself, Yaspik Mayarba, he has to supply it for four. Because when the temple gave the money, that money that the temple gave is already considered like it's a, like it's bought. You see in um, uh, we don't say that. We don't say mais kindness. We don't say that the money. Uh, there was a concern in, in, in that someone may pay money, not take the merchandise. And the fire, a fire breaks out, and God forbid, in, in the seller's house, and the merchandise is still there because the buyer paid for it. He says, you know what? I'll only save my stuff. That's the his stuff anyway. I'll leave it there, and, and he'll come back and say, Yisruchi techabaliya. I'm sorry, there was a fire, it got burnt. So we wanted that it should, needs to be actually uh, taken to, to, for, it to be, uh, for it to be considered bought. But what about, it, where, um, biblically, giving the money is already the purchase. And in the temple, that's how it works. When the money was given, it's already the purchase. He was already purchased that he has to supply uh, the grain. Okay, let's say it's the opposite. So far, he's losing money, right? Let's say he's agreed to supply Mishalish. To supply from Risa for a sella. But Amdu, but Amdu Mayarba. But it went up, and now he's able to supply four. So he could be making money on this. He said, no, Maspik Mayarba. He has to supply four. You don't make money off the uh, temple. That's how it works in general with the. Uh, <laughs> 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 use, <laughs> use this for your. Uh, wherever you want it to apply it. She had hektish al el yaina because the 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 sanctuary uh, always has the upper hand. Okay, now, 
What does this tell us? See, Hectish is now gaining one extra saw. What do you? What does that extra saw go for? Sure, okay. Gaffin okay. says, "Case in this day." That's what, that's what we just got here. We said that the, that there's extra money in the temple that's used for a sacrifice. Where does it come from? Rabbi Yechonon says it comes from this guy that agreed to supply for three, but it, it ended up he was able to give four, and he has to give four, so that extra one adds up, and it goes to the to the Kate Mizbech. Tani Kavaseder Rabbi Yechonon. Yosef Tani Kavaseder Rabbi Yechonon. There's actually brises that prove both of them. Tani Kavaseder Rabbi Yechonon. We start with Rabbi Yechonon. Does anyone know Reb Chia's name? What was Reb Chia's name? It can't be Yosef, because Chia was the son of Abba. That's a different Reb Chia. Birutse midas halalu, maho yoisin. Actual brisa that says, "What's what do we do with what's spilled over from the measurement?" If there's another sacrifice there that they could bring it with, so yikrevu imay. Then they bring it together. They bring it together. Ve'im lanu. If it's left overnight, so then yifslu balina. It's going to become puzzle. Why? Because it was already sanctified. There's no way of solving it, even if you put it in a vessel. If we just like, that doesn't solve it. Ve'im uh, lav. And if not, then mikitzim emesim is beach. The imlav means that if there's no sacrifice there, but it was not left overnight, then you can use it to purchase a small animal to, to the mizbeach. The kate mahu. What would this? Uh, what would this go for? Oilis. It would go for oilis. And habasal the shame va'irs l'kayinim. The meat is totally burnt. That's how a burnt offering works. But the skin goes to the kayinim. Tanya kavasei the Rabbi Now we have a brisa that approves Rabbi Yechonan's point. The Bryce is always an earlier source. Rabbi Yechanan is an Amaira, and Rabbi Chiyabar Yosef is an Amaira. We have a Bryce that proves that they're right. Hamakabala love lasapik slasis me'arba vamda mishalish masrik me'arba. If someone accepted on himself to supply the temple with four sa or only one coin, and then the price went up, and now he can only supply three for that coin, he has to supply the four. Mishalish, but if he agreed, accepted himself to supply three, vamda me'arba, and the price went down, and now he can supply four for the same coin. Maspik Miyarba, he supplies four. She had Hektishal El Yainov. So Shashaninu, and the Brysa concludes, and this is what we were taught. Moiser Nesachim, the Ketzim is Beach. What's left over from the Nesachim goes to keep the, the altar uh, busy. Okay. Uh, this mission that we actually, someone mentioned yesterday, and um, it, this clarifies some points that we, that we had, that I had. I know this, this mission clarifies some things. It's important. It's clear? All sacrifices, com- communal or individual, require nesachim. Now, let me show you what's going on over here. We don't, it doesn't mention the nesachim in, in Vayikra, in the Teres Kainim, where you have all of the uh, all of the sacrifices. It just says. You bring the birds, the, the, you sprinkle the blood. It, it doesn't have any of it. Then, in, in um, Parsha Shlach, <coughs> you have this interesting thing. Yeah. What is it? In Betesva of Gimel. All of a sudden, it just says, This is right after the, uh, the spies. The, you know, after the spies, so the, there's a group of people that said, No, we're going up anyway, and they were smitten. And, uh, uh, then it says, Okay, Hashem speaks to Moshe, saying, Tell the Jewish people when you're going to come into the land, um, and you, you're going to bring a burnt offering to Hashem. If it's a burnt offering, or Zevach, or another sacrifice, whether it's a vow or a gift or it's your holidays um, to be a sweet smell to Hashem from the cattle or from the sheep and the one that brings the sacrifice has to bring a flower and a sarin mixed with the Rebiyasi and Shemin what does this have to do? Rashi says over here Kisavayu um, he says he was giving them good news 
you will make it in. You know, they were just they just got another forty years in the desert, and immediately they get a halacha of what's going to happen after they come in in forty years. It's incredible this contrast, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden we're introduced a new halacha about karbanos. A mibcha or nesafe? Why? That he bring whenever someone brings a sacrifice. He brings soilas isarein balo berviasein shemen v'yayin lenesach berviasein, and then it says that's for the keves. Then it says la'ayel shnei yisraelim v'chisase ben bakar. Could the coin take a little swig from the wine? It was all poured. It was all poured on the altar. Left day, left day. The kainim would be the the the, 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 the would be singing away. There was no vodka. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is before vodka. This is, when, the, when would the Levium be singing? By the pouring of the wine. That's why it says, mm. the Pusik that says that wine gladdens the heart of man mm. and God. It says, how does it, it says, we understand how wine gladdens the heart of man, but how does it gladden God? Yeah. It says, because the Levium would sing mm. during the pouring of the wine. Okay, so all sacrifices. That wine would just go and. That's it. Yeah, it would go, it's, it's Sefel, I think it, 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 there was this, it was um, there was a drain underneath, mm-hmm. it, would, it would harden underneath in this, um, mm-hmm. like a cave under mm-hmm. the ground. Okay, Chutz, we always have this. Chutz, except for, Min uh, Bechar, if there's a firstborn animal, that becomes a sacrifice. Vahameiser, the tenth animal, they would make a hole in the fence and they would, t- they would count ten animals and the tenth one would be a, a, a sacrifice. Vah Pesach, the carbon Pesach, all of the animals that we're listing now are the exceptions that don't need the uh, Nesachim. Vah Chatas, the sin offering, this is what we were thinking about yesterday. And Vah Asham, and the Asham doesn't need Nesachim. Ella, Shechatas Yishal Metzairah, Vah Asham Etunen Nesachim, except with the exception of the Metzairah. The Mitzayra we mentioned yesterday, his Asham does need Nesachim and his Chatas. It has to be Kavan Lishma. It has to have uh, That's what we were learning yesterday, right. Right, if it was done, Shalei you would bring the Nesachim anyway, because it also would be not. Tanur Rabbanan was taught in a Braisa. See, this is a, uh, a good example. The Mishnah tells us the law. It doesn't explain where it's from. The brisa, which Rebbe doesn't include in the Mishnah, the word bar means outside, it was left out of the Mishnah, uh, but nevertheless it adds, it adds um, information that the Mishnah didn't tell us. It, it, it helps us understand the Mishnah. The Gemara quotes it as in a discussion to explain the Mishnah. The Pasuk says, the rabbi started in the brisa, Vasisim isha And this is a quote from the verses.